to get the best yields and the most disease resistance you need to use the pure genetic material of your avocado trees in your avocado orchard in this episode i'm going to talk about the difference between f1 and f2 rootstock seeds with dr roberto nathan of hazera 1939 Dr. Robert O. Nathan was the former extension officer at the extension service of the Israeli Agriculture Ministry and uh, he has worked together with the father of the Israeli avocado industry, Dr. Ben Yaakov. They have done a lot of research on avocado rootstocks and he's the best person to discuss about avocado rootstocks, especially the West Indian race from the Israeli selection. Some people have suggested me that since we don't have commercial avocado rootstocks, why don't I just simply uh, use the plant that I already have, break it from the craft and allow it to grow and then use the resulting fruits seed to create a new rootstock. The problem with that is that avocado don't, doesn't grow true to seed. So the seed that you will get from that uh, plant would be F2 seed, not the F1. And we need pure genetic material so that's why we need F1 seeds from Israel. If you have any questions about commercial avocado farming or avocado rootstocks, post your questions in the comment section down below and I'll ask Dr. Roberto Nathan those questions and share a video about it. Now let's proceed to the discussion. This is a very important topic. Now, what's the difference between F1 and F2 rootstocks? That's a good question. Yeah. Because... Thank you for the question because that's a very important issue. Yeah. And many people uh, do not understand the difference. Okay. And the difference is very significant. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about genetics. Every variety, and I'm general, has Fairchild, uh, Degania, every, it doesn't matter if it's a rootstock, whatever, every variety of every crop has certain uh, genetic conditions. Okay. that were confired with the selection program, blah, 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 etc. This characteristic, when you propagate, if you want to, the first generation after propagation is what we call F1, that has the original genetic conditions. If you have a mother, or a mother orchard, and you pick the seeds, the seeds have all the genetic heritage mm -hmm. that belongs to the variety. If you put it in the plant, it grows the tree that has all these conditions. But the tree that grows from this, from this seed, if you take its seeds yeah. and put it again in the field, yeah. it has it is F2. F2 yeah, means yeah. it's contaminated mm -hmm. it, because there are other trees yeah. around yeah. that from, can be from a different variety. Yeah. And by, by pollination, cross-pollination, mm -hmm. you get uh, the, some characteristics will remain, but not 100%. So F2 lost some of the original characteristics. So if you say you're very satisfied with the variety and you want to repeat it, it's, it's the taking seeds for this, from this will result in F2 and it will not be the same. You have to go to the source again and yes. use the original seeds. Yeah. And okay. that's what people do not understand. Because if I take Fairchild, size yes. from the originals is F1. But if I plant the seed in a commercial orchard with different varieties, and there are some other orchards in the vicinity, yes. you cannot prevent cross-pollination. So the seeds that you take from these trees lost some of the original characteristics. And if you call it, you can call it Fairchild, but it's yeah. not the same Fairchild as the original one. But then I had a question. Let's say there's a Fairchild uh, rootstock orchard uh, and uh, you still need a type B to cross-pollinate Fairchild. No, you don't need that because these trees can pollinate themselves. 
okay. a fir tree, tree that you what you say yeah. it's in commercial field field in a co for commercial varieties for yes. example here in israel yeah. we use ettinger to yeah. pollinate hash yeah. it's not that hash alone will not yield in commercial yield but this will increase your yield but this is okay. a commercial. This has nothing to do with F1 and F2. Right. F1 and F2 is preserving yeah. the original characteristics. And for yeah. that, every time you plan, you need to go back to the source. Of course, the source has to be identified, has to meet some very uh, strong uh, uh, characteristics like... Uh, for example, here in Israel, the requirements are that 20 kilometers radius in all directions okay. cannot be another avocado orchard. All right. Okay. To prevent cross pollination, yes, oh, okay. to make sure that your certificate yeah. is F1. Okay. So the characteristic, if you're talking about fertile, oh, yeah. is the original fertile and not. Right. Some mix. contaminated fur child. So the genetic material remains pure. It remains the same. Yeah. So because if I tell you fur child has this tolerance for salinity, for chloride, for lime, yes. but if th that means F1. The moment you are in F2, yes. actually you don't know how the it will react. The problem is that growers that are not aware of this this particular difference between F1 and F2, they think they are growing fur child, and it's not the yeah. original fur child, and some of the original characteristics were lost. And then they say, of course, they would say, oh, but I put fur child, and whatever you, you told me that it's sort of run to this and this, and it's not happening. The reason is very yeah. simple. It's not the original. Yeah. And you, when you plant it, actually, you don't know what you get. It's very important then because uh, this was, yeah, I didn't, uh, this point for me was unclear previously, but now it's much more clear. I hope I explained it clearly. Yeah, I you explained it, it course, very well. A way that it should be understood by people that has not a uh, uh, scientific background. Yeah. I hope you found the video insightful. I'm posting regular content on my channel, so make sure to subscribe. Thank you. That's it for this video. Bye.